All right, football fans, we are back. It's been a while. It's been like a couple months. Had some recording issues, but we're back with the Football v. Football podcast. We got Naive. We got OY, a.k.a. Cowboy Starcast. Well, both of these guys are Cowboy Starcast, and they got a big game coming up this weekend. They're the only team with a big game because uh, my team's out of the playoffs. NF, OY, how y'all doing? Great, man. Thanks for having us. Good. It's been a while. Doing good, man. Doing good. Great to have you guys back on here. Hopefully this uh, this recording works, trying it out for the first time. But we're here to discuss the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend, where there's a seventh uh, playoff team here that snuck into the playoffs. I wish it was my Seahawks. It wasn't. Bears couldn't get it done. Packers are in as a seventh seed, and they're playing y'all's Cowboys. But we're not going to start there. We're going to start with the Saturday games. Start off with the Cleveland Browns at the Houston Texans. A couple of previous bottom dwellers playing on wild card weekend here. Uh, the Browns are favored by a couple points. Um, we'll start with Naif here. The upstart Texans are in the playoffs the first year. They draft all these great rookies. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, just a phenomenal year uh, from Stroud. Obviously, he should have been that number one pick. The guy... Uh, it's had the best rookie QB season since Dak, maybe even better. Ooh. Yeah, uh, the guy's amazing. I think the guy has a bright future. This whole team, actually, uh, I think they have a really bright future. I'm I'm not too big on the Browns. They have a great defense. They finally have some okay QB play, but the guy's like 40 years old now. And I saw every Joe Flacco. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty old, right? You remember when Rudley was making jokes about Joe Flacco and now he's and leading now his team he's to the playoffs. The playoffs. <laughs> yeah. He was out of the league at the time, but Lully is uh Lully sees the future, I guess. Um Yeah, who's who's the QB on Rudley's team now? <laughs> I can't even keep track. Yeah. Um I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't see I think if the Texans can generate any type of pressure, I think they can stop the Browns here. I don't think their offense is that great. Uh they have Amari Cooper. Uh, the run game is a little up and down with uh, Jacoby Ford and uh, uh, Kareem Hunt. But it's going to come down to QB play. If uh, Flacco has a good game, I think the Browns win no matter what. I think if they rattle him, if they pressure him, sack him, I think the Texans can win this. Uh, it's a toss-up for me. I'm going to go with the Texans here, 24-21. 24-21. Um, oh, why? I know you've been a big fan of the Texans all year. Well, Anderson, I know that defense. You've been talking about them. What do you think about this matchup? You think Browns have a chance? You think Texans are going to make it their first year in the playoffs after, after what seems like a long time? Yeah. So before before I get to that, I do want to touch on <clears throat> CJ Stroud. So yeah. So if you look at the numbers, Dak's numbers were actually they're somewhat comparable. So Stroud has, I think, twenty three touchdowns and I think like what was it I think six picks or something like that Dak had the same number of touchdowns less picks but then he also had six rushing touchdowns so I think statistically Dak probably had a better year his rookie year and the team was uh top seed but I do think that Stroud is a as a rookie was further along as a passer than Dak was as a passer because uh, Dak obviously grew into what he what, what he is now but Stroud you know came out of Ohio State and all that I mean, he kind of comes in with that pedigree either way you know super impressive season but I say all that to say it's ironic that you know you're comparing those two because Stroud's comp coming out was actually Dak Prescott so yeah, yeah it's really interesting uh, but yeah, uh, so Houston, I've been on the Houston defense bandwagon all year because I I think we saw signs last year. Now, if you know how they played us at the end of the end of the, end of the year last year, should have beat us. We were upset because we were supposed to roll them, but their defense played really well, and I think we saw it carry over into this year. Uh, yeah. I don't think they're a fluke. I I think that they have pieces that can, that they can continue to build on. However. I do think the Browns have something going right now. And the reason I say that is because their defense, again, their their defense has been elite all year. I think they have the best defense in the league. Um, maybe you can say Baltimore, just because I think Baltimore has a better culture of defense. Maybe as a unit, I think Baltimore is better. 
but Cleveland, just the way they're playing, uh, you know, they lead the league in defensive EPA actually by a lot. Uh, Miles Garrett's probably going to be DPOI. I know. We, there you go. We, we've talked about this a lot, uh, <laughs> but he's probably going to win it. Um, and here's the thing. I think Flacco has kind of given them kind of like a steady hand on offense. You know, they were really floundering until mm-hmm. Flacco kind of came along and kind of gave them that stability. They don't need him to be like elite. They just need him to be good enough, right? Just kind of drive the bus and kind of move it along. Uh, and he's been doing more than that. Amari's kind of had a res- – I don't want to say resurgence because mm-hmm. Amari's always been a great receiver. But I think, you know, we've really seen him come on these past few games. Had, had a 200-plus yard yeah. game. Yeah. So I, I'm going to take Cleveland, actually. I, I think Cleveland gets this dub here. Um, that's no knock on Houston. I just think they're really young. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of come in and win right away in the playoffs. So I think Cleveland, you know, they lean on their experience and they lean on that defense. And I think they win a close one. I think 23 to 20, they take this one. The patterns that I usually see with teams, regardless of sport, is once you get to the playoffs, you need to have your heart broken. You need to have that experience in order to deal with the pressure later. The Browns have Joe Flacco. The Browns have Amari Cooper. The Browns have Miles Garrett. The Browns have a lot of veterans on the team that have been through it, some that have won titles. Texas don't. Texans don't even have a have a coach that's more than a year into coaching. Uh, you know, all their guys are young. C.J. Stroud, uh, Will Anderson, Nico uh, Collins, uh, all their guys. All their guys are just really young. Um, like you mentioned, uh, that defense is going to give the the uh, Texans some problems because they're probably the best defense in the league. They wreak havoc. Uh, Texans are really exciting. Uh, they have a lot of former Cowboys. From what I remember, they have Noah Brown and Dalton Schultz and all those kind of guys, I remember they went um, cross state uh, in the off season. Uh, I'm I'm just giving it to um, the Browns because of that because of the experience, and they they've just looked to me a little bit more you know consistent throughout uh, throughout the season. So I'm going Browns on this one, but it should be a good game. Moving on to the next one, the Dolphins at the Chiefs. Chiefs are favored by five points. Man, how the Dolphins have fallen this year. Uh, one wrinkle in this game, uh, it's projected to be zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be a cold one. Oh, why? What do you well, think? Well, not only is it going to be zero degrees, it's going to be minus 30 wind chill. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know where that is. no good. That's got to be one of the coldest games it's in cold. history. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. <clears throat> Isaiah Pacheco is going to be beating that, bat, beating that ground up. <laughs> um, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I kind of go back and forth on this game, actually, because I, I actually think the Dolphins are a better team. Like, if you tell me, like, who's the better team, yeah. I think Miami's the better team this year. The problem is is that they're playing in Kansas City, and I think the quarterback tilts it a little bit, right? The quarterback kind of evens the playing field uh, because mm-hmm. I've kind of had this feeling that, there's a real possibility that we get to the playoffs. And as much as the Chiefs have struggled this year, all of a sudden Mahomes just wins a game, and then he wins another game. And then the next thing you know, he's in the AFC Championship game again, right? Mm. And I can I can see that. I, I, I can see that pretty easily, actually. But just to be... Mm. Just for the hell of it, I'm going to pick Miami, man. Just, just for the hell of it, I Dolphins. yeah, I'm going to pick the Dolphins. Um, Tyree kill revenge game. I think there you go. I didn't even consider yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's a big I think one. It, that's the thing. Tyreek's. I don't know. Maybe he's used to the cold. I don't know because he played there for a while. But mm. I'm gonna say thirty to twenty-seven. Miami wins this game, but. I wouldn't be surprised if Kansas City pulls it out. Man, when's the last time a Miami team played in zero degree weather? I mean, but I t- like you said, Tyreek is used to it, mm-hmm. so maybe some of the defensive guys are used to it too. Yeah, Raheem Mostert is Raheem Mostert. Is he healthy? I think he's so. banged up. 
But here, but eight chain. I mean, eight, eight, eight chain. I think I read a stat. Miami has lost their last ten games where the temperature has been below forty, something like that. Wow, wow. So they're due. <laughs> Maybe. And now, what do you think? I, I don't know, man. Your boy, I, your boy Mahomes. You get his yeah, quarterback my, my homeboy hasn't been great this year. I mean, I'll concede that it's been an up and down year for him <clears throat> and this whole Kansas City yeah. team, Kansas City Chief team. Um, their pass catchers just have been downright horrible this year. Uh, but when it comes to mm-hmm. Miami, I mean, it's still two different teams. They're they're completely different on the road. And I think this game is going to play out a lot more like uh, last week's game did versus the Bills. Uh, I don't I don't mm-hmm. think they can handle the cold. Yeah, maybe Tyreek can, given his history with the Chiefs. But uh, I don't I don't see Tua or Mostert really dealing well. In uh, this weather, another thing is they're down their top three pass rushers. The Dolphins are. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Chubb is out. Yeah, Who that's else? that's huge. Um, the Phillips, other guy, yeah, Phillips. Come on, Phillips. 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 They, and I think it was Wilkins. I, I don't know if Wilkins is playing. No, I think not, he's playing. Wilkins is playing. I think another one of their edge uh, rushers is out. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I see this being a Kelsey game uh, with these short passes. Um, and I see the Chiefs edging this one out. I think they'll just barely win this one. Uh, I have it at 26-23 Kansas City. I just think Mahomes' history and uh, and the playoffs uh, prevails here. So this one, to me, normally would be a game where you see the Chiefs kind of going this, you know, going down and the Dolphins going up. That's what it seemed like for most of the season. And then towards the end of the season, they started to level off a little bit. The Chiefs started to get a little bit better, and the Dolphins are starting to get a little bit worse. If, when you factor in the weather in this one, the experience in this one, a lot of times experience in the playoffs is just really, really valuable. If you play at home, you know, you're used to the pressure. Um, Tua doesn't really have that as a quarterback. Mahomes has it in spades. Um, and the defense is, because of all the injuries on, on the Dolphins, kind of level out. A little bit. So if you asked me this question, you know, maybe two, three weeks ago, I would say Dolphins easily. But the Dolphins have caught kind of fallen off. The Chiefs have the experience. It's gonna be a big Kadarius Tony game. Give me the Chiefs. Wait, hold on, time <laughs> out. What's the over under on yeah. uh, Taylor being there in the being there in the in the tenants? Taylor's Taylor Swift. Yeah. Too many. I'll still be there. Whatever it is, it's too many. She'll be there. Well, you know the For you sure. know the conspiracy, the, the conspiracy theory is that the NFL made this the streaming game so that all the Swifties would would buy Peacock so they could stream the game. Oh wow! I'm not surprised. Yeah, there's there's a lot of conspiracies going on with Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, by the way, that are tied to a lot of the current news. <laughs> do you know he got like two hundred million dollars to do that commercial for oh, Pfizer? It's, it's horrible. Two hundred million. That's crazy. That's crazy. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, fellas. But we're going to move on to the next game. Steelers at Bills. Bills are favored by 10 points. They should be favored by 50. Um, It's going to be 21 degrees in Buffalo. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a lot of people getting injured, uh, throwing themselves on tables. (laughs) We'll start with NF here. What do you think is going to happen in this one? Yeah, I mean, I think this was the easiest game to pick out of of the bunch. The Bills are rolling. The Steelers somehow ended up in the playoffs. I don't know how, but... They did, but uh, they're missing their their bet because we let them, we let them, we let them win in Seattle. That's yeah, cool. that's, probably, that's anyway. probably how it was done. But they're, they're without their best player. Uh, they don't stand it. They barely stood a shot with T.J. Watt. They stand zero chance without him. Uh, I think the Bills are going to just trample him. Although I will say Mason Rudolph will allow them to put up some points on the board, whereas uh, Trubisky or Pickett, it would have been like a thirty-one zero shutout. Uh, I see this ending up twenty-seven or thirty-one to thirteen Buffalo. I think the the Bills keep rolling here. Nice. We can laugh in Sherry's face. Oh, why? What do you think is going to happen in this one? So I'm inclined to agree with NF. I think so on a new, not a neutral field, but if if it was a regular kind of game script, I think the Bills blow the brakes off of it. Right? Steelers probably don't even belong on the field with them. But 
I think the weather is going to muddy this up a little bit. And I think that the weather is kind of a wild card here. I don't think that the Steelers are going to win the game. I, I think the talent discrepancy is too much. You don't have Watt. You don't have really like the quarterback discrepancy is too big. Um, and the, their offense has been really inconsistent all year. So I don't think that they can really match up. And we've seen what Buffalo can do when they're kind of rolling. Buffalo, by the way, is also a really inconsistent team because like sometimes like they'll go out and they'll look like world beaters, and then other times they'll go out and they'll just like play like these. That's you true. know these games where it's just like, what are you doing? Um, super sloppy, super inconsistent. But either way, I think Buffalo should blow the brakes off of them. But I think the weather is going to make this a lot closer than it otherwise would have been. So I think Buffalo wins. 23 to 17. Oh, wow. You bring up a good point that I forgot to consider, which is the Steelers have great running backs, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. I think they have the most broken tackles of anybody in the league. And um, I would, I would take them over the, the Buffalo bills duo of running backs of James cook. And uh, who's their second running back? A really old guy. Is it Frank it's Gore? Fournette. Who's the second Fournette running back? And uh, Murray playoff. Lenny. Fournette and Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray and four. Yeah. A lot of, these uh, geriatric guys, they're a great, you know, running back court. Uh, but the thing about the Bills is they also have Josh Allen that runs. They also have Stephon Diggs. They have uh, Gabe Davis, who is liable to have great games, and Dalton Kincaid, who's been showing up. They just have so many weapons. Uh, da- Dawson Knox, Khalil Shekin, shout out. Um, it's, it's been, it's been th- the fact that the Steelers are finally using George Pickens is like a long time coming because he's a great receiver. And they're finally getting him in there. Deontay Johnson is not bad as well, but I don't. I just don't trust Mason Rudolph. You guys mentioned T.J. Watt's not going to be playing in this one, and the Bills' defense have um, a ton of good players. Uh, highlighted, of course, by uh, Taylor Rapp. Shout out you, Dub. So, of course, I'm taking uh, the Bills in this one. They're going to win it at home. I hope they crush them forty nothing. Um, that's what I'm just. But maybe it'll be forty to seven. I'll give Jalen Warren or Najee Harris a touchdown. Um, uh, and uh, I look forward to laughing in Sherry's face. So we're moving on to the big game here. Packers at Cowboys. A lot of history in this one. I saw Des Bryant posted on Twitter or Instagram. Today marks however, however many years, years since he caught the ball. There you go. Since he caught the ball. Um, and uh, he's still bitter about it. And I'm sure you guys are as well. Oh, why don't you get us started? What do you think's going to? Happen in this one. Um, Cowboys are favored by seven, by the way. Uh, so if, if I think I speak for everybody when I say there's a lot of kind of like nervous energy, like floating around, like Cowboys, like the fandom right now. Uh, I, and mm. I get it. I've talked to Knife about this. Like, you know, I, I think the past 10 years, really the past like 25 years, kind of like scarred us a little bit. Also, Green Bay, I think, is like nine and one or something in the last ten games that we've played them, something like that. Really, something. Yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, oh, but that's mostly Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and I think they're four and zero oh at Texas Stadium. Um, and now if I'll let you bring up the Aaron Jones stat when you go because I know you like that one, but um. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of PTSD going on right now with the Packers. But if you look at it kind of objectively, remember, Cowboys are a two seed for a reason. They earned it, right? They, they, they've they shown you that they can be a juggernaut at home, right? They're averaging like 37 points a game at home. Before the, before the Lions game, I'm pretty sure it was like 40 points a game. So it only dropped like two weeks ago. You have arguably the league MVP. You have a leader, uh, a, another leading candidate. And actually, you have two candidates for defensive player of the year. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So I feel like who's the second one? Uh, Bland. Bland's. A, I mean, I don't think he's a strong candidate as much as Micah, but you get nine picks gotcha. and five pick sixes. You got to be in the running. Pretty yeah. good. Not yeah. bad. Um, 
So I think the Cowboys should be really heavy favorites, but I think just there's like this aura kind of like, you know, hanging over and there's like this cloud. Uh, what's interesting is like Green Bay, Jordan Love, which by the way, I called this at the beginning of the year. I said, hey guys, keep an eye on Jordan Love. Uh, so not to like, you know, I'll just pat myself on the back a little bit. But um, you think you think he's like a he's coming into his own. You think he's a superstar? I think it's too soon to say that, but I do think he's he's played really well. Like like the trajectory, mm-hmm. you can see it maybe getting to that point. But I think it's too soon to say he's like a superstar right now. He he's played really well, and I think he can be pretty good, definitely. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Um, I think they have problems on the defense, though. I think they're set at least in their secondary. Um, and I think that they, they can be had in the secondary. The issue is, is that this Cowboys team just kind of has to show up and take care of business, honestly. Like, just no more excuses, no more, like, coming out flat. Like, no, like, now's the time. You guys, the past couple of years, you, you, you have that playoff experience now. You guys, by the way, what's funny is, like, everybody keeps talking about Green Bay as, like, this young team and they are the youngest team in the league Cowboys are the second youngest team mm. <laughs> the Cowboys are number two is that yeah. right yeah oh they're both younger than the Texans yeah like as a roster as a whole really I'm surprised um but so I I think like you look beyond that kind of nervous energy the Cowboys should be favored but I don't think that they should overlook Green Bay I think this would be a closer game just because I think Green, just because Love is playing really well right now, so I'm actually going to punt on picking the game. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tune into the Cowboys Starcast for the prediction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to punt on that. I just hope you know. I'm 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 hope I'm hopeful that this team can be different from years past. I'll, I'll say that. Okay, guarded optimism. NF, what do you think? Yeah, I mean. Uh... If this was a regular season game, I'm taking the Cowboys by minimum of four scores. Um, but Interesting. yeah, obviously, I'm going to be a little hesitant here because it's a playoff game, because it's the Packers, uh, even though it's a different team. It's a completely different team, but they're a team that's rolling, right? They've been on fire. Jordan Love is playing the best football of his career. Um, and Aaron Jones, who was MIA this whole entire season, has started to play his best football of the year. I think he's had like three straight 100-yard games now to end the season. Uh, talking about that stat, I mean, I, I don't I don't know if it comes into play, but uh, Aaron Jones has the third highest rush average versus the Cowboys behind only Walter Payton and uh, Barry Sanders. So there's that. That's just so random. It's very random, but uh, we've seen this Cowboy team give up nearly 200 yards to James Cook. So I think... I don't think this is the same Cowboys defense. Obviously, uh, they, they played the well against the run against the Dolphins and uh, the Lions after that, and the Commanders as well. Um, we should win. We should win. Uh, we should definitely win this game. I just don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. I think it's going to be a lot closer to the playoffs. If the Packers can put up some points, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really dangerous for this Cowboys team if it's a close game. They're late. But I think if the Cowboys could just take care of business and do what they've done all season at home, actually going back to last season, um, they should win this one. I'll set it at 34 to 27 Cowboys. It's really interesting just like viewing the, the psychology of you guys as Cowboys fans because on paper, the Cowboys should crush these Packers. I mean, I think they're better at every level. I mean, forget this Aaron Jones resurgence. Most of the year he sucked, and last year he wasn't that great either. The fact that he's having a resurgence against some bad teams, I don't know really what that's going to mean when he plays like one of the great defenses in the league with the Cowboys. Jordan Love's still young. This is his first foray into the playoffs. The receivers are young. Sometimes their leading receiver, I don't even know his name. I don't recognize him. Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs don't even lead them in receiving most weeks from what I've seen. Uh, and then that defense, um, you got Jair Alexander that um, doesn't even know when to come out with the coin toss. That, b- doesn't seem like he's like fully, fully by there. Way, he's banged up. He rolled his ankle in practice, I think, yesterday. So there's that. 
Yeah, really? But I don't know if that's just gamesmanship and they're trying to. That's going to affect his ability to walk out into the middle of the field for the coin toss, but maybe he'll play in the game. Him anyway. uh, listen, man. I mean, I've seen the Cowboys play. I know that they have some games where, like, they don't show up. I remember, like, you know, against the Cardinals, against the Bills, stuff like that. I know that happens sometimes. But when I'm looking at the talent of the team, you know, you mentioned Dak on one side, Mike on the other side, C.D. Lamb, one of the <laughs> – I mean, you're talking about a guy, C.D. Lamb, a guy that's over these last, like, two months been, like, amazing. Uh, you have Bland. You have Gilmore. You have, I mean, you have so many great players, and you're playing at home. I understand the history, and you just want to see it. You want to see it in the playoffs. And, and now you mentioned that. You said if this was a home – if this was a regular season game, you take them to win by 40. Um I think once they get comfortable in the playoffs and they start winning games, they did win against the Bucks last year. You know, this team, this group of of guys is starting to get comfortable. Um, of course, I'm, I'm taking the Cowboys here, and I'm I'm taking the win comfortably. I think they win by twenty. It's also. I hope you're right. Up, up next, the Rams at the Lions. This is the, <laughs> the, the game that a lot of people say was orchestrated for for this weekend. That, the return of Stafford and Goff uh, in the matchup, the return of, of Stafford to Detroit. Um, all the all the you know storylines here. Rams. I don't even know how they're in the playoffs. I mean, actually, this is another team. You know, thanks to Seattle, they're in the playoffs because they they swept us in the in the regular season somehow. But they're in the playoffs and they're playing the Lions, and the Lions have a chip on their shoulder, regardless of what you what, what you think about you know that game, whatever that happened. Last week, they really kind of, you know, let off a lot of that anger. And I think they're going to c- carry a lot of that anger. And They have a lot of speed. I'll stop talking now. I'll, I'll, I'll let Naif go ahead and, and uh, discuss here. What do you think is going to happen at this rams Lions? game? Yeah, I, I think this is the most interesting game uh, of this wild card round. It's a lot of storylines here. Stafford and the, the Rams, nobody thought they had a shot at the playoffs early on in the season. For them to just come back and make the playoffs. And that running game, man. I mean, we everybody talks about their receivers, but that running back has been unbelievable. Um, I think Stafford is going to be very mm-hmm. comfortable playing there. I mean, he played there for so many years. I don't think uh, it's going to be tough for him. Whereas uh, the Lions, I don't know, man. Uh, I want the Lions to win. I want Jared Goff to win. Uh, I, I think he was dealt... Uh, Bad hand, especially with that trade and how, how it went down. Uh, but I don't know. I just don't see it. I see the Rams squeezing this one out. I think they have. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think the Rams win this one. I think they can put up points on the board to, to keep up with the Lions. Uh, and I think they ultimately edge it out by a field goal. Uh, let's say 31 or 30 to 27, Los Angeles. Upset special. Yeah. Lions are favored by three points of playing at home. Oh, why? Do you agree with that? Actually, I kind of do. Oh! <laughs> I kind of do. Um, you guys beat the Lions once, and this, and, and you guys don't believe in them no, no, at no. all. I, I, so here's no, the thing. I, believe in I, I actually, I'm actually rooting for Detroit. Like as like a football fan, I think it's a great story. The first home game in 30 years, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure was when they destroyed us in 1991. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm rooting for them. You know, I have friends who are Lions fans, so I've kind of like seen, I've kind of experienced it like secondhand. So, Dearborn, shout out. So I'm 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 hoping that you know that they have some level of success. Thing is, is that this is setting up where the Rams might be like that hot team that starts coming on late, you know, they have like those weapons. If the quarterback starts getting hot, because the quarterback is really streaky, right? Stafford is one of the streakiest quarterbacks I've seen. So if he starts getting hot, Mm -hmm. um, I I, I think that can present problems. And again, going back to your point about, you know, sometimes you kind of have to get in and experience the playoffs before you can kind of take that next step. That might be a situation where that's kind of what the Lions have to do this time is like your experience. Like that's a that's a really young team too. Yeah, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, right? Other than golf, like yeah, there's not cool. a lot of them have been there before. So um, I can see that happening. And what's interesting is I would so I was looking for like 
the the odds, like the the betting odds for like some of the awards. And I came across like this pretty cool or interesting stat. It said that 61% of the bets and 78% of the money is on the Rams for the wild card matchup. So a lot of people are actually betting on the Rams this weekend. It's I don't know. This is this wow. is this is really like interesting. So I'm hoping that the Lions win. Um and that's by the way, the the Rams winning would actually help the Cowboys. Like if the Cowboys could win, I think, you know, it sets up favorably where the Rams go and play the 49ers. And I think the Rams can give the 49ers a challenge, right? Because they're a divisional rival. That's true. They just beat them last yeah. week. I don't think that's I mean, going to happen, no one. At least that's, that's my opinion. Happen. Because I if think the we Rams play the Rams seven, next round. No. Why? No, no, no. They reseed. They reseed. The lowest, the lowest seed, seed yeah. goes to the highest seed. Oh, oh yeah. The Rams are sixth. That's right. Rams yeah. So sixth. the Rams yeah. are the Niners, so, and then we play the four and the five if we win. Right. 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 Yeah. That would work out well for you. So I'm hoping for a Lions win, even despite that, just because like I'm pulling for them. But I think that the Rams, they just seem like they're getting hot. Um, so I'm going to take them by like a field goal, like 24 to 21. Well, I've been watching the Rams pretty closely, and I know what I mentioned about experience, and you mentioned it as well. Matt Stafford, Sean McVay, they've won a Super Bowl, Cooper Cup as well. But what I've seen from the Rams, I just think they're fraudulent, and I hate them, so I'm not going to pick them. I I hate that team so much, and the Seahawks should have beat them. It was a 17-16 game there, like, what is it, like four or five weeks ago. And, you know, I mean, Pukunakua is a great – receiver shout out he also started at UW went to BYU I know you guys are getting annoyed about that Kyron Williams is also a good running back but not exceptional um he's not he, he's no Jameer Gibbs and uh, I, I think even David Montgomery is um uh, uh, you know on his good days is better than Kyron Williams um the Lions have tremendous speed I mean Jamison Williams and Jameer Gibbs those guys uh, run you know two of the fastest guys in the league you know Talk about Amon Ross St. Brown. Talk about Sam Laporta, the guy that's really coming on this year. Jared Goff, just really kind of efficient. I think Laporta's you know, out. Comparing their defenses. Who's I think that? Laporta's injured. He is injured. Is he yeah, injured? I think he's out. That's no yeah. good. Can they get back TJ Hawkinson for mm. this game? Is that Hawkinson out right. the year? Oh, he's on a I different think team. <laughs> I, think, I think he <laughs> – just do, just do a quick take back. No, but he's also hurt. Yeah, he tore his ACL, I think. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm looking at the defenses, obviously, if I'm being objective, uh, Rams defense, probably a little better. Uh, you know, Aaron Donald, of course, they have this guy, Kobe Turner, who they have been trying to tout as defensive rookie of the year for, I don't know, a few months now. He's no Devin Witherspoon in terms of his, his, his level of play, but he is, he's not bad. Um, so I'm, maybe I'm taking the Rams defense slightly wow. over the Lions, but it's, it's at Detroit. They're going to be rocking. They're ready for this moment. Um, I, I'm, I'm going with the Lions. I'm going with the Lions, going with our brothers in Dearborn. They're going to take care of these Rams. And um, I know it wouldn't be optimal for you guys, but screw the Rams. Go Lions. Last game of the week. Oh, I, Monday actually, night. Quick, Monday night quick, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got to Go say ahead. this because I heard a really good point about this game. So I was listening to the okay. athletic podcast and they were saying that everybody keeps um everybody keeps like describing this as the Matthew Stafford revenge game, but it's more of a revenge game for Jared Goff. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, they yeah. like traded him away. They like gave him away, right? Like they gave they gave away yes. picks for the Rams to take him or the Lions to they didn't take he, they him. They didn't even tell him. They didn't even tell yeah. him. Yeah. So it, it was crazy. They sent them there to yeah. die. So that's that's actually more kind of fuel for like the Lions winning in this scenario is that this is like the Jared Goff yeah. match game. Of course. Yeah, and Matt Stafford already has a Super Bowl. He's just coming back to like flaunt and flex. And no, they're going to take care of him. They're going to take care of him. Monday night game, last playoff game oh. of the week, Eagles at Buccaneers. Eagles are favored by three points in this one. This is the only game that's going to be outside and nice. It's going to be about 68 degrees 
in Tampa Bay. This is a very weird game, guys. Uh, I didn't expect the Eagles to be playing on the road at the Buccaneers in the playoffs, in week one of the playoffs. Um, these guys are your rivals for, for many weeks of the of the year. We thought they were a lock to win that NFC East, and then they faltered. And um, I can give all that credit to one person, and his name is Drew Locke. <laughs> NF, what do you think about this game? I mean, uh, just the way things are going, the way the season ended, you'd think the Bucks should be favored, right? Uh, the Eagles have been going downhill. Uh, Hertz has that nasty finger injury. A.J. Brown, I don't even know if he's going to play. He has like an MCL or something, right? Or hyperextended knee. The Eagles' defense is atrocious. Uh, Mayfield just had an incredible game to end the season. Um, still going with the Eagles here. I think um, just what they were able to do last year and then at times early on in the season, I think they're going to they're gonna win this game. Um, I think both teams put up points. I think it's going to be a really high-scoring game. But I'm going to take the Eagles here. I think they're going to edge it out, and I think hopefully if everything goes according to plan, it's going to be the Cowboys and Eagles. But, Ooh. yeah, I, I would rather play the Bucks, to be honest. But So you want it, you, you want the Eagles to win for that matchup? No. You, you, but do you actually think no, the Bucks are no, better? No, I'd rather play the Bucks. I'd rather Dallas take on the Bucks in the second round, but I think we can easily beat the, the Eagles at home. Uh, I think we have their number, and we're familiar with them, and I just think we're a better team than them, especially playing in Dallas. Um, yeah, I think the Eagles are going to win this one, though. I have it at 33-30, to 30, Philly. Interesting. Oh, why? Do you agree? So I can definitely see the Eagles um, kind of magically just turning it on somehow uh, just because of the talent, right, that they have. At least in certain areas, right? The skill positions, their offensive line, defensive line, kind of that talent. However, I don't think that it's trending in that way. AJ Brown is hurt. Devonta Smith was hurt last week. I don't know how bad Devonta Smith's injury is, but AJ Brown did not practice today. Uh, so we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, Jalen is injured, right? Like NF pointed out. Um, and it just seems like the kind of vibe, the confidence of that team. I mean, I don't know, but from like a distance, it just seems kind of weird right now. And it's gonna, I was just looking at the forecast, there's an 80% chance of rain on Monday night. So that's mm. gonna play in. I, I did think not the, know that. Yeah. yeah I think the I'll, Buccaneers I'll are gonna edge score. this one out. I think the Buck. You think Buccaneers? I think they can edge this one out. I, I think. Uh, really. I think they take this one a really close one, like twenty-four to twenty-three. Um, it just I'm just basing this off of how the, the seasons have kind of gone. Although I will point out that we talked about this multiple times throughout the season that the Eagles were getting breaks during the season. You know, whether it was the refs, whether it was just the ball literally bouncing, you know, in their favor. Uh, you know, we pointed out that their vertical passing game was not like sustainable. Like there was no, like it wasn't a consistent passing game. Uh, and I mm -hmm. think we're kind of seeing a lot of those things play out. So I think knowing that, knowing that they're on the road, knowing that it's supposed to rain that night, I think the Bucks have a legit shot at taking this, so I'm going to take them as slightly, slightly taking that game. Fellas, I mean, I just can't imagine a world where Baker Mayfield beats the reigning NFC champions in the playoffs. I can't, I can't, I just can't imagine him beating the Eagles in the playoffs. And Rashad White in my opinion, is still one of the worst running backs in the league. I mean, I, I think he's, he's great as like a little pass catcher. If you get him in some space, he can catch the ball. But as a runner, he's horrible. He's one of the – I think he's one of the worst starting, starting running backs in the league. But what they do have is consistent receivers like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Kate Otten. Kate Otten's yeah, a good one. Um, and most importantly, though, they got a defense. They got Antoine Winfield. But most, most importantly, they have a top three all-time linebacker in Levante <laughs> David. 
<laughs> you know, so somebody commented on on that video just recently, and he was like pissed about it. it. Uh, shout out to anyone that watched our, our what did, what did he say? Office. What did they write? He was like, he's like, uh, he's like, come <laughs> on, man, Bobby Wagner is the top three linebacker. Levante David doesn't belong there, and I got into a little <laughs> war with him. Anyway, um, but uh, yes, okay, I, I, I know this is another one of those arguments where there's one team going up the Bucks and one team going down the Eagles. I, I definitely get that, and I saw Jalen Hurts' his finger, and it doesn't look good. Um, but uh, and you know, AJ Brown. Great, great receiver. Is he? I know he's he's not practicing, but if he's able to play, he was like an MVP candidate in the first half of the season. That's how good he was as a receiver. Devontae Smith, one of the great number two receivers. If he's healthy, uh, DeAndre Swift, um, also a really good running back, a better running back than than uh, Rashad White, in my estimation. They still have a good defense. The Eagles still have a good defense, even though they've been kind of teetering. I know these uh, past few weeks, but. Um, I just I just can't imagine a world where, where where the Bucks pull off this this upset. I think the the Eagles lose in the next round, but in this round, um, Baker Maker, Baker Mayfield is not beating the Eagles. I just can't see it. I can't see it, fellas. So I guess we'll see. Well, that brings the uh, the slate to an end here. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for for jumping you don't on. You want to talk about this uh, the okay. Seattle head coach search? I mean, I do. Of course I do. I'll say a few words on it and you guys can jump in. I mean, I was it, it was pretty shocking to a lot of Seahawks fan that Pete Carroll was was fired. A lot, a lot of us kind of wanted it to happen, but didn't think it was going to happen because he had he had such a stronghold over um, Jody Allen, the, the owner. And he was basically at the level or above the GM, John Schneider. So it was like, who, like, who was going to fire him? He, he would have to resign. But it happened. Um, I think, um, it should have happened maybe like within the past like year or two, I think he was, uh, he wasn't adapting. So, but moving to the, to the more germane conversation, which is who's going to replace him. Um, I told you guys I wanted to, to be, um, an offensive minded guy like Dan Lanning from Oregon. Uh, that, that was my top guy. A lot of, a lot of guys are talking about Ben Johnson. I know, uh, I don't know about Ben Johnson, man. I, I don't know. I, I think he's done a good job with, with, with the lions, but. Uh, I want uh, like one of the the innovative minds. Uh, there, there's a guy. I think what is it? Ben Solak, the guy, the, the offensive uh, coordinator of the Texans. I think I think somebody like that, just like a up and coming offensive mind that's able to really utilize a lot of the great weapons that the Seahawks have on offense that Shane Waldron hasn't been able to. Um, so my ideal pick is an offensive minded guy. But the real thing is about Dan Quinn, whether he should do it. I express my feelings to you guys. I know he's a Seattle guy, came from Seattle, came up with Seattle. I don't want another defensive-minded guy on this team. I, I just um, – By the way, he's plus 425. I just – you know – Dan Quinn. Huh? Dan Quinn is plus 425 to win the – To be the coach? Yeah, they have betting odds and for Kellen coaches. Moore is plus I feel like that can be rigged. Kellen Moore is in second place. But also, you know – Oh, yeah. Kellen Moore. No way. Yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah. No so way, the Kellen probability Moore. has Quinn at 19% and then uh, Kellen Moore at 18%. You know, they all, they all, a lot of people are saying as well, you, you don't want to get a defensive-minded guy because um, they say, like, offensive coordinators are more easily plucked. You know what I mean? So, like, you want to get, like, that offensive mind to be your coach rather than, you know, your offensive coordinator. And then you just keep cycling through that and you have no real – Offense unless you have, or no continuity. Unless in the you offense. have Kyle Shanahan as your OC, that's true. That's true, and that's that's why they got to that Super Bowl. By the way, I mean Dan Quinn. Those other years, he wasn't that great. But I I, I want to get y'all's opinion on it. I I think DC, uh, sorry, uh, Dan Quinn is an ideal DC, and I don't think he should go any further than that. But we'll get y'all's thoughts on it. What do you? Yeah, think? I am. Um, I mean, I can definitely see that. I. Yeah, I can definitely see why you think he might be an ideal DC. I think the problem is is he hasn't God, how do I say this? He hasn't had enough unsuccessful years as a head coach to where teams will rule that out. Right? He had like one run, mm-hmm. they went to the Super Bowl and they kinda didn't work out. So I think 
teams will look at that and say, oh, well, at least he got him to the Super Bowl, right? And then he's always been good wherever it's been. So I think he's definitely going to get another chance, like just based on what he did in Seattle, based on what he did did in his doing for us, he, he's definitely going to get another chance. The Seattle thing's kind of funny because he's going to get a job wherever he wants it for the most part. I think the Seattle thing has kind of become the front runner just because of that past relationship. And people are saying, you know, he knows like the front office and he has a good relationship with them and all that stuff kind of plays, yeah. plays out. I think it can work if, if you get like an offensive mind and just let, let that person do whatever they're doing. Like, Agreed. like a cop. I mean, Kyle Shanahan doesn't grow on trees, but like I, just the same kind of concept. Just like let them do. You got the offense. I got the defense, and then just work on it from there. If you do that, then I think it can work. Yeah. Well, then if I, you know, I already told you, the only way I'd be open to Dan Quinn coming is what is with an offensive coach. What I forgot. Nope. If he brings his line. Oh, Micah Parsons. Uh, did you hear what he said? That's crazy. <laughs> he man. said that today on Twitter. Yeah, yeah they need to okay. back he up the Brinks joking. truck and just and just and just give it to him. Listen, man. I think you guys should hire <laughs> Dan Quinn. You guys were saying he almost won it, won a Super Bowl because of Kyle Shanahan. I think That's what I think. I think That's he should have won a Super Bowl and he didn't because of Kyle Shanahan. I think if they ran the ball more in the second half against the Patriots, they, he would have a Super Bowl. So he's obviously going to get a second chance as a head coach. He's been a great defense coordinator. And his time, although he had moments of disaster as a head coach, he had a pretty successful run. Um, he got to the Super Bowl, should have won that Super Bowl. And he's uh, he's come back and done great as a defensive coordinator. I think there's a lot in play for you guys, though. You guys have a lot of nice defensive pieces. And offensive pieces. I think if you guys just put an, a, a solid young offensive coordinator and pair him up with Dan Quinn and maybe try to recapture that Legion of Boom uh, aura that you guys had when he was the defense coordinator, I think mm-hmm. I, I could see that working out for Seattle, definitely. Especially with the cornerbacks and, mm-hmm. and the safeties you guys have. Um, I think he will become your next head coach. You yeah, think I so? Do. I do. I, do. I, I, yeah. I think he wants to go back there. Just the way. It- Another thing about him, I don't know if you guys remember, but when he was the Falcons coach, he was a little unhinged as a coach. He was he was like very kind of emotional and like didn't handle pressure very well. Do you guys remember that? He was like kind of like really really animated on the yeah. sideline and seemed seemed really stressed and not able to deal with that pressure. Do you guys yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, but but I think I think I think you so, learn from those moments, right? So I, yeah. I don't expect it to be the same. Right. Yeah. As I guess we'll see. I mean, what, what do you, yeah. Oh, I, what, I was going to say like, I just the way that just the way that they're talking about it. It just kind of seems like all the arrows are pointing that way. Right. And yeah. my thing is, is like, I think it could be a lot worse to be honest. Yeah. You guys could hire Kellen Moore as like your head coach. <laughs> I don't, no, I, don't I don't want that. I, don't, I, I think he, I, you know, Kellen Moore, I think, still has more growing to do as an offensive coordinator. Maybe he can be a head coach one day. I don't think he's ready for it right now. Um, yeah. I, I, I think you get Dan Quinn, your defense is set. You just need hey, what like if he brings? To... What if he brings Kellen Moore? I mean, Good. Chargers might have might have a new head coach that just wants to completely change that, right? But what if what if he brings yeah. Kellen Moore as his OC? He's familiar with him. I don't know, man. Kellen Moore does, hasn't seemed to have evolved since that very yeah. – like there was like a half a season where he was like really good with you guys, and then like he stopped evolving. A- a- am I following that timeline yeah, correct? Yeah, 2021 – so 2021 we had – okay, so really, really I think it was just Dak, right? So whenever Dak has been healthy for the past three or four years, we've had like the number one offense in the league. But when – Callen was the OC in 2021. Yeah, we had the number one offense, and we were rolling. But then it got to a point where, like, the offense 
just didn't have answers to like certain defensive schemes and certain defensive game plans. And that kind of became a common theme with him was like, he wasn't scheming for players. He wasn't like kind of working through kind of the defensive matchups and like the chess game that was going on. The other thing with him, yeah. The other thing with him is I feel like he doesn't like, he doesn't like set up plays he doesn't have like a sequence of plays to set something up, if that makes sense. It seems like he has like a lot of plays and he jumbles them together. And then like, he just goes with that instead of having like a game plan, right? Like, okay, this play is going to set up this play, which is eventually going to set up something like later on. Like I, I, I didn't see that with him, mm. but there was no like ultimate kind of purpose. It was just like, Oh, we're just going to like go up and down the field and like just, you know, what did McCarthy say? Like right. light up the scoreboard and like rack up the yards. That's I don't know. NF is that kind of like what you remember? Yeah, that's I, I think like... it's bad news for Kenneth Walker and uh, Zach Charbonnet. <laughs> if he's your OC, I'll tell you that much. Um, but but really? in terms of scheme, he did. I mean, this year he sort of switched it up. You saw Keenan Allen have a, a resurgence. I mean, he had an unbelievable year, and they were scheming him up. So, yeah, I think with Dallas, he didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. But then again, he had a lot of mouths to feed, man. Mari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. Uh, it's, and C.D. wasn't the C.D. that he is today. Michael Gallup. So there are a lot of mouths to feed. And, and you needed to run the ball with Zeke. So I, I don't know. Okay. But, but okay, I had Justin Herbert on a lot of my fantasy teams this year. And Naif, I know you had him on one of your fantasy teams. And yes, Keenan Allen did have a great year. But only Keenan Allen had a great year on that team. And he his ability to scheme up the the Chargers was pretty horrible. Yeah. And you talk about how he deals with running backs. Austin Eckler somehow is was half as fast this year as he was last year. And I blame that on Kellen yeah. Moore. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's all <laughs> Kellen Moore. Yeah, but he was also out. So, so we'll see. It'll be interesting. He was out for a while. Kellen Moore no, was out. Uh, Austin, Austin Eckler was out for like six or seven games, right? Yeah, that's true. Man, charges are a mess. It'll be interesting to see, to track some of these coaching. Um, the fact that Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, and Bill Belichick all retired within a day of each other is pretty crazy. Really dramatic end of an Belichick's era. Belichick's still available. But there's, I think there's... Belichick that... didn't retire. He didn't retire. He's he's just out. I don't want him as a Seahawks. I'm going to just put that out there right now. I do not want him as a Seahawks. There are rumors that... to watch. There are rumors linking him to us, which I think is ridiculous. It's horrible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the odds on that are, but I'd say if you put money, you should lose money. <laughs> that that was the case. But it'll see. I, we'll see if we'll have a coaching carousel again. There's like seven or eight jobs open, I think, um, in uh, in the NFL and in some jobs open in college as well. So we'll see how it shakes out. But, fellas, we're almost at 50 minutes here. I really appreciate you guys jumping on. It's been great. It's been a long time. Hopefully this this new Riverside thing works and uh, everything goes smooth and we can do these more often as we move through the playoffs and the, and the off season. But I uh, want to remind everyone again, all platforms like subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. It's always fun hanging out, talking football with you guys. For NF, OY, a.k.a. Cowboy Starcast, I'm Baggers. Have a fantastic day, football fans. Peace.